Hey, good morning, friends. Uh, happy Friday. Now, every once in a while, we will hop into our our Facebook groups and just do an, an FAQ. And so I asked a couple weeks ago, uh, what's hard for you? What's struggling? What are you struggling with right now? Um, I answered some last week. And today, we're just going to go over some of the common challenges and really where to start when it comes to enrolling, um, business networking, recruiting, finding new clients, writing content, um, and just the overall like not able to meet sales goals for, for me and my team, which I, I think these are all common challenges. And um, I hope it's okay that we talk about them. I, I believe really firmly that as adults and as business owners, it's really important that we have real talk. Of course, we want to focus on the positive. Of course, we want to stay in action. Of course, we want to focus on our purpose um, and our bigger things. But I think that all the hype sometimes in the industry um, can then gloss over, right, the day-to-day -day challenges that really do have to do with what do I do first, or there's so many things to focus on, what is my next step, or how does this actually work? Because network marketing is an industry that is typically um, built with people who are recurring, right? Like, they when I, when I started in direct sales, I was 20. But I was a political science major. I was studying to be a lawyer. Um, I, you know, I played sports, but my only job before direct sales was blockbuster video. <laughs> um, and that wasn't necessarily something that prepared me to what would end up being, uh, you know, acquiring over 500 new customers and, you know, team sales in, um, I don't know, like one and a half million and I don't know, 500 or something um recruits uh i mean i couldn't just mindset my way through that i needed to know how it worked and what to do and to know that i wasn't the crazy one who was the only person in the world that didn't know the answer so i think real talk is is really important so uh we're gonna we're gonna talk through these um and i hope this is helpful for you i hope this is helpful to to maybe uh some people on your team um, if you like getting all your questions answered, I want you to let me know in the comments or shoot me a message because we actually have a membership group where you can access all of my online training. If you're like a, just tell me what to do kind of person in a path, if you guys like paths, do this and then this, and then this, and then this, and then this, instead of getting everything thrown out of you and being able to ask questions and have them answered every single week. Um, let me know. Uh, because we have something for you on that. It's pretty affordable. Okay, so let's talk about enrolling. Having a hard time enrolling, um, where do we start? So I'm going to draw for you guys today so it's a little bit easier for you to consume. Okay, so where to start with enrolling? We, what we want to do is we want to know what is our sales process. Um, when we work with clients on sales process, uh, the first one is we want to set up a conversation. Right in that conversation, we want to give an agenda. What are we going to talk about? We're going to ask what's important uh, to you when it comes to this topic. So that way we're building trust and gaining input. Uh, we're going to personalize um, the benefits of the product. So something like earlier you mentioned you care about this. So this is what you'll use for that. And then we're going to make it easy to buy with a choice of two kits or packs, right? Instead of throwing the catalog at them and saying, you know, here's pick out with what you want. Um, enrolling becomes difficult when we're selling on the fly. Right? So you want to have some sort of conversation. Um, either a one-on-one -on -one conversation, a group conversation. I mean, shoot, you could do even most of this if you needed to in a video. Um, and then what, you know, what we really want to start measuring is you have to invite someone to know about how the product works before you can have a conversation about the products before you can have an enrollment. And most people will focus here 
and then they'll get really stressed, right? But what we actually wanna do is we wanna focus here uh, to just make things a little bit easier. So those are my start thoughts on how to start with the sales process. Now, here's what's, uh, okay, so hopefully that helps. Let me go ahead and switch to the next question. All right, so the next question has to do, uh, Kelly asked a question about she's been networking a lot, but not getting anywhere, setting up lots of coffee dates, but it seems like a lot of people just want to pitch their business or products to me instead of getting to know each other. Um, how do I handle this? And so if we're doing some networking events, right, everyone's out there networking, trying to build their business. But when you're networking, what you're really looking for is referral partners, right? People that you can connect with um, that will end up connecting you with other people that, right, they're not serving with their business and, and it works from there. So if you're setting up like a coffee date or a get to know you something, um, I think what's really important is the agenda, right? What we're going to do is um, I'd love to have coffee with you, <clears throat> virtual coffee. Um, here's what I'm hoping to do. I'm hoping that we can get to know each other, right? Talk about our businesses and who we help, right? Um, that way we can know who to refer. Uh, I'm not going to pitch my products unless you ask me to, uh, unless you ask. Um, and I'd appreciate, right, if, so I, so I think, let me think about how to word this. I'm not going to pitch you my products um, unless you ask, and I'm going to ask for the same There might be a more eloquent way to say this, but I think being straightforward with other entrepreneurs is a good way to go about it. Um, and then maybe, how does that sound? Uh, I'm not running out of, right? So if you're seeing any conversations that you're having really going off the rails and not landing where you hope it would be, it has to do first with, do I know what is my objective? And then you have to go back and make sure that that agenda is clear from the beginning. This is going to build more trust, compassion, stability, and hope. Uh, and if they are like, well, if you're not going to let me pitch my products to you, then what's the point of even meeting? Then, right, we're um, not going to have that meeting. Okay, next question or next thing that is hard for one of our community members is recruiting. Where do I start? So this actually, uh, most people, they struggle with recruiting because they're, they're really recruiting on the fly. Want to do the business. Want to do what I do. Um, it's a really big ask without a lot of information. And so what we recommend is to set up an appointment um, and write like a 30-minute conversation. We actually go over how the business works. And here's the, here's the question that I recommend that works really, really well. I don't want to make assumptions. Would you like to know how to get free products or earn income? with company, whatever your name of your company is. Um, and we'll let them say yes, no, or maybe. Um, if it's a yes or a maybe, we're going to attempt to set up an appointment with them. And if they say uh, no, you say, okay, no problem. If you change your mind, just let me know. Okay, where do we start when it comes to finding new clients? Well, I just remember we got to have a connection to be able to have um, an invitation, right? To have a sales conversation 
right, to have a client or a customer. And so again, if we're trying to go straight here, we end up very stressed out and feeling very desperate, like we're hunting for clients. What we're actually doing, right, this feels like hunting. And uh, some of us are comfortable in a hunting space. Uh, most people, not so much. Uh, most people feel like they'd much rather farm. <laughs> Um, and so where we want to focus is increasing the number of connections. And if you're looking for new clients, you really just want to find people that you have two things in common with, right? Cause then you'll like each other and then you're more likely to, you know, connect on a human level. This is network marketing. Um, this isn't an advertising type business. So it's really important that relationships are involved, that you like the people that you work with and that they like you. Now, instead of trying so hard to be likable, really the best way to have like two people like each other is just, do they have things in common? I have a lot of friends and a lot of clients that are really, really diverse. I'm really proud of that. Um, come from different states different backgrounds, um, different personalities. Um, it's really cool. I, I really like it. And it's because we have a few things in, in common. I think that humans have more in common than they have difference, but we focus on everything that's different. And so uh, looking for people that you have things in common with, I think is a good start. Um, what we like to focus people on are business networking events, um, hobbies, and interests, right? And there's uh, both in-person ways to do this, and then there's online ways to do this. But if you focus on uh, things that you have in common with people, it's, it's going to be a lot easier to increase the number of connections you have. When we increase the number of connections, then we can increase the amount of invitations, increase the number of sales conversations, increase the number of clients, right? All of it works together. Okay, next one is writing content. So what are the types of content that network marketers are write? Now, I think the person that asked this might have a little bit of a different business, but the, the thing holds it's the same idea, right? So if you're writing a training or you are writing a speech, right, for your team or something like that, um, this, is, this is going to um, be important. Now, one of the first things that I do ahead of writing any sort of content, course, training, speech is um, pre-work. Ask what's hard about this topic. Now, most people skip this step. They're just like, I know all the things, and so I'm going to give them my knowledge, but it doesn't really matter if it doesn't bridge, bridge the gap. And so every course we have ever built has started with what's hard for you about this, and then we really hone in on um, creating action and eliminating what's hard. The next question is what action do I want them to take? Right? So we want to start with what's hard about what action, and then we're off to a good start. We're going to base the topic and structure based on that. Um, I always do a super messy first draft. Um, I've been writing content for about 15 years. And uh, what I found is trying to go straight to, to rough, like a good version, it always fails me. Uh, super messy first draft in a notebook is the way to go. Um, then it ends up in a second draft and then it ends up in a final draft. I found that to be way faster than trying to write a final draft, which um, really, I, my brain flow doesn't, doesn't work as well. Um, when it comes to a, a module, I look at, you know, I let them know, okay, here's the action. Right. Uh, I tell them what's the, here's the action we want you to take. Uh, maybe I'll tell a story 
uh, then the steps, and then a like if you get stuck. Right, and then summarize. And that helps a lot. Okay. Uh, the next the next question here was just about face to face stuff right now, um, and I know that that is challenging. I think plan A is certainly for a lot of people is how do we meet face to face with people. Uh, but there's this great quote that says if plan A doesn't work, stay cool. There's 25 other letters. Um, I think we get stuck or overwhelmed with what's the best way to do something. And I think that the best way to do something is the way you're actually able to do it. So for me, this Facebook Live, um, ideally it comes on Thursdays. It did it this week because I was slammed. I had so many coaching calls yesterday that um, my brain really wasn't in a, in a great space to deliver this well or clearly or concisely. And I remembered that the best time for me to do a Facebook Live is the time I'm actually going to do it. And so it ended up moving to Friday morning. The best time to make calls is the time to actually do it. The best way to meet with customers is the way you actually can do it. And I think a lot of people over the past two years have been like, well, the best way for me is to do it in person. So I'm not going to do anything unless I can do it in person. Um, but I, I think that that's really, as entrepreneurs, we need to be able to be more flexible than that. And so if you can't meet in person, do a phone call, do a Zoom. Um, Zooms are not as exciting for, I think, general population as they used to be. And so we might need to move to a phone call or you might just say, hey, can I FaceTime you real quick? Right. There's a lot of different options, but I, I think being flexible is really important. Will it be as perfect as your most perfect option? No, but it is certainly better than nothing. And I want to encourage you in that. Uh, last thing that I want to address today, and I hope this is helpful for you guys, is um, just this frustration around not hitting sales goals. And I think what's really helpful when it comes to reaching sales goals is to break down into small actions, right, or habits. And so, for example, if I want to sell 1,000 points or however your company does this, I'm going to need seven orders, probably. I'm going to need 12 sales conversations or product overviews or whatever that looks like in a month. Um, and in order to do that, I might need to meet 40 people, right? And in order to do that, I need to participate and participate. I can't even write at the end of this video. Do you guys ever do that? Like, all right, participate in five Facebook groups, right? And I need to invite six per week to conversations. And so when, once we take this big goal of the sales goals and we break it down to the actions, these are things that I can do daily. And they're way less overwhelming. It's a lot easier to stay focused on um, actions like this that end up creating, uh, creating this. Now, the next piece of this, right, for you know, being able to reach sales goals, I think is a clear definition of success. And this is something I work with clients on, uh, whether they're brand new or whether they're all the way at the top of their organization, is what are we trying to accomplish this upcoming week? Um, what specific actions? Right? And actually have a list of three to five things. Right? Not like invite people. Invite X amount of people. Things that you can cross off your list. Oh, you know what? I have not been sharing this time. Here's what I wrote. Okay, so we want a clear definition of success. What specific actions um, are we taking? Three to five different things. So if you are doing a mentor call, right, if you're mentoring your team, what we want to ask them or what are your wins? Uh, we're going to say, what does success look like? Right, and we want them to have three to five clear actions. And uh, what help do you need? Right, to do those. And that helps to keep things super, super focused 
um, and timely with your mentoring instead of just like mentoring about everything or having things turn into a uh, therapy session, which is not not what you're doing as a network marketing leader. So we just always want to start with what am I trying to accomplish and then backtrack. So if my clear action is to join some Facebook groups, then I might ask the person, um, what do you need help with? And if they know how to join Facebook groups, they don't need help with anything. They just need to go do the thing. And that way we're not overloading people with information that isn't timely. Okay, so I think that's uh, that's it for the questions today. This has been a pretty thorough little FAQ here. Um, I hope it's been helpful for you. Um, I also just wanna let you know, if you want help with your network marketing business, what we do is we help people move toward full-time income. And there's a few different ways um, that we do that. The first one is called the Emerge Surge, which we did name prior to a pandemic where they always talked about surge. I don't know what to do about that. Um, and this is like, this is a membership, right? And it has all of our courses on sales and social media and uh, Q and A weekly, right? So basically if you just need to know what to do and how to do it, um, this is great for you. And it's 47 bucks a month. The second is our six to eight week masterminds. Um, and these are basically full classes with online plus live coaching, group coaching. And um, that way we set up your entire system over the course of a year. And then we have the resilient leader. Uh, how did I spell resilient? I should know how to spell resilient by now, don't you think? And this is for people who are working 15 plus hours a week. Uh, they are in it to win it. And you know if that's you. Um, and this is a goal of full-time income. And this is basically a private coaching with me and group coaching hybrid. All right. So uh, you get some personalized help and you also have an awesome community with all the things that you need. So if you um, want to get more details on how any of these things work, um, just you know, leave me a comment, send me a message. You can put like one, two, or three if you want more details on how that works. Uh, all we'll do is we'll chat with you about it. If it makes sense to set up a conversation with my business partner, we'll do that. Um, if not, that's fine too. We just want to make sure that you know what's available to you um and we're able to we help a lot of people so we want to be able to make sure we're available for you so uh, i hope that this whole um conversation was was really helpful for you and if you need anything let me know we're here to help